Thank you Miss. for thank you for Sorry. the introduction. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm Rosanna Kirkwood. I'm a final year vet student at the University of Nottingham in the UK. Uh, I need to start by saying a big thank you to my sponsors, without whom I'd not be able to be here. Uh, that's the University's Federation for Animal Welfare, MSD Animal Health, Bowringer Ingelheim, and AM Veterinary Consultancy, as well as my co-authors, uh, particularly Wendell Wappenar, who was my supervisor and provided a huge amount of support throughout this work. Okay, now for some audience participation. Hopefully you all picked up a photo of this on the way in. I'd like you to grab your pen and mark on the rump of this cow where you would inject uh, if you're performing an intramuscular injection in this region. Now, I appreciate some of you may use a different site altogether. However, if you could humour me on this occasion and pretend, pretend this is the only site safely accessible to you at this time. For those of you that don't have the paper version, you can make a mental note uh, on the image on the screen. I'd also like you to think about why you've injected here. Maybe someone once told you it was the best place to inject. Perhaps you're confident there's substantial muscle mass in this area. Or maybe you're not actually sure. I know I wasn't before undertaking this project. So when looking at the literature at the outset, this is what I came across. The texts agree that the sciatic nerve is the largest in the body. Damage to the sciatic nerve can occur from injection. And if the nerve is damaged, it will cause the animal a degree of pain. Although the texts agree on these points, the evidence for this is anecdotal, and none of them commit to suggesting a site in order to avoid sciatic nerve damage. So maybe you're wondering how important this is. Maybe you inject cows all the time here and you've never had a problem. This cow on the left is suffering from sciatic nerve paralysis. Of course, this and a down cow would be quite extreme examples uh, of this problem presenting. However, what if sciatic nerve damage from injection just results in pain? We know cows are quite stoic creatures and therefore it might uh, present more like this cow on the right. Seemingly nothing wrong and therefore goes unobserved and unrecorded. Importantly, this could still um, be impacting on welfare and productivity and so we should endeavour to avoid it. Which brings us to the research aims here, which were to investigate sciatic nerve anatomy further and find out if it is at risk of damage from current intramuscular injection practice. To investigate the anatomy, we dissected four dairy breed cadavers, two Holstein Friesians and two Jerseys. This is a skeleton model to help us see where the sciatic nerve runs. It emerges here at the sacrosatic foramen progresses caudally under the gluteal muscles and drops behind the greater trochanter of the femur before dividing into its branches which supply the hind limb. On the left we've got a picture of the nerve in situ and on the right we've got an MRI which we were able to obtain showing the sciatic nerve in cross section highlighted there in yellow. In our cadavers we found that it was very wide, three and a half to four and a half centimetres very flat at less than five millimetres thick. Oh. And the depth of the sciatic nerve depended on the body condition score of the animal, varying from two to 12 centimetres beneath the skin. If that's not enough to convince you of its size, I've got a real life model of it here, which you can come and see in closer detail at the end. Um, I think that speaks for itself. Okay, so to figure out where people are injecting in relation to the nerve, we recruited 54 study participants. The participants were mostly a mixture of qualified and trainee vets, uh, but also farmers. The only criteria was that they had to have injected a live cow in the rump at least once before. They completed a short questionnaire which gave us information about their occupation, which I've shown here on the x-axis. And also they rated their experience injecting cattle from low to high with low being shown in green and high in light blue. We also asked them about their injection technique. Oh, sorry. From their responses, we could see that the rump was in common use and also that the practice of injecting large volumes in one site did occur. You're looking at more. Right. That's what I'm calling. 
Next was seeing where they injected in relation to the nerve. To do this, we set up the cadavers in an attempt to mimic a standing position. As you can see, this was a bit of a challenge. To map their sites, we used these metal grids, as you can see, stapled them along the sp spine. That enabled us to lift them up off the cadaver. Too many animations. Like this, while participants injected, and lower them over the injection site like this to record its site. These metal grids corresponded with a spreadsheet, and therefore this injection site would be recorded in site E12. Participants could choose the noodle length to suit them. We, asked, we told them it would be to inject an antibiotic. They could inject with or without syringe attached. And each participant injected two cows each, one on the left-hand side of one cadaver and one on the right-hand side of the other. No product was injected. Once the, everybody had injected, we dissected down each cadaver and mapped where the static nerve lay in relation to the grid. These, this images show the results visually. These are four cadavers. The red line shows where the static nerve runs in each cadaver, and the dots show where participants injected. From this, we can clearly see that where people are injecting is in the proximity of the static nerve. However, we didn't know how far away people were from it depth-wise. To get this information, we measured the depth of the tissue in each square of the grid. We used a digital depth gauge, taking a measurement from the skin surface to the first point of resistance, being the bone of the pelvis or the sacrosciatic ligament. The sacrosciatic ligament I've highlighted here in yellow. Now the static nerve closely associates with these structures, enabling us to then subtract the needle length that the participant used from the tissue depth in that area to get an idea of the distance between needle tip and static nerve. This graph shows those results. So to orientate you, zero, zero would be where the static nerve sits, show you here. And all the circles represent the needle tips. Each cadaver has a different color. So all of the circles on the y-axis would be needle tips that um, landed above the static nerve at varying depths from it. Needles, circles here, and here would be either side of the nerve and circles here would, reaching a negative depth would have actually punctured through the nerve, inappropriately depositing drug into the abdominal cavity. You will see all the circles in the negative distance um, are blue. That's because they are in our lowest body condition score cadaver. The black box demarcates our high risk zone. This zone was determined to be within five centimeters of the nerve. This was to account for real life variables such as available needle length, volume to be injected, the possibility of injection site lesion, and also the variability in injection site within one participant. 70% of injections landed in the high risk zone. So that brings us to the conclusion that the sciatic nerve is at risk from current injection practices particularly in poorer conditioned cows, such as dairy breeds, which have lower muscling in this area. We can see from the pictures and my model that the sciatic nerve is very wide. And importantly, occupation and experience appeared to make no difference in this study whether participants injected in the high risk zone, with vets rating their experience as high, being just as likely to land there as those rating their experience as low. Okay, so in order to um, promote good welfare and practice moving forward. We'd like to really recommend the, night, the neck, as is already the optimum site for intramuscular injection. Um, however, where safety and accessibility makes this impossible, we can suggest a more lateral site behind the tuber coxae, uh, about hand widths behind this, where there's substantial muscle and no m major underlying vessels or nerves. Here I've shown that more visually, so the blue circle is where we're suggesting you should inject should you need to use the rump. Time for your self-assessment. Take a look at where you indicated you injected. Maybe next time you pick up a needle, you need to think twice about where to place it. Thanks very much for your attention. Um, the 
full article here um, is where we got it published in the VET record and we also made a video summary of the research which is on YouTube. Thanks very much.